The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and ebook format on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Mosenzia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosenzia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Eve Love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, coming soon to Hamilton Radio and also other networks as well. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop tuckets, throw pillows, tote bags, and hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop tuckets, throw pillows, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike You can also buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com with the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who's backed by popular demand. We talked about the book, uh, John and Mary Margaret. She was born and raised in Mississippi, moved to Memphis, uh, Tennessee back in 88. She was a co-director of uh, 2010 and the 13 Oxford uh, Mississippi Creative Nonfiction uh, Conferences. Also director of in 2011 as a Memphis Creative um, Nonfiction um, workshops and also panelists on many fests as well too and um her writings infused uh, with elements of her own life and um her new book is a collection of personal essays and um sat on the island of um Patmos, uh, Greece during a pilgrimage with her husband Father Basil um Cushman and uh, as an orthodox priest and it's got 35 essays, three poems and five excerpts and more and uh, no partridge and pear tree by the way. Live ladies and gentlemen for the Plus Studios uh, in her beautiful home, the uh, multi-talented author of the new book Pilgrim Interrupted and backed by popular demand, Susan Cushman. Susan, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us once again. Thanks Mike, great to be back. Well, it's great to have you on board as well, too. We're, you're really excited about the book, Pilgrim Interrupted, uh, 35 essays, three poems, and uh, five experts from your books. You also had A Second Blooming, Cherry Bomb, Friends of the Library, and uh, Tangles and Plagues. Also, the uh, Pulpwood Queen, Southern Writers on Writing. And we last talked about your book, uh, John and Mary Margaret, which is really fascinating. And before we uh, get into all that, once again, very quickly, tell us how I got started. How I got started writing? Uh, yeah, just simply quickly, uh, tell us about, all, all about how you got started, very quickly. Well, very quickly, high school, on uh, the high school newspaper, thought I'd be a journalist, uh, married young, raising kids, uh, soccer mom, I'm being dot, 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 I'm giving you bullets. And then, and <laughs> a true writer indeed, yeah. <laughs> and then in 2001, when my youngest left for college, I decided to seriously pursue writing. And I started with essays that were published in various anthologies, journals, and magazines. And then my first book was published in 2017. 
Tangles and Plaque, some other daughter faced Alzheimer's. Had three books, three books in 2017. I was 65, 66 years old. My eighth book is coming out in June, and I'm 71, and I'm having a great late life career. Mm-hmm. And you certainly did too. You also were on a pilgrimage uh, in Greece with your husband, uh, Father Basil. Um, you know, Christian as well too, an Orthodox priest. And um, you know, I I love to hear about your ventures in Greece as well. It's like you know, how'd you go on this pilgrimage, and uh, what inspired you to go? And um, you know, what was it like being on a pilgrimage, especially in Greece? Yeah, well, I've been on a lot of pilgrimages. Some even without leaving. The U.S. to various, there are a lot of Orthodox monasteries in this country. And then, of course, there are personal spiritual pilgrimages that you don't have to leave town for. But in 2007, my husband and I went to Greece. I've been there two or three times. But that particular pilgrimage, we ended up in the cave of the apocalypse, Mm. where St. John was inspired to write the book of Revelations. Mm. And so the essay I wrote, um, about that, Pilgrim Interrupted became the title essay of my collection, Pilgrim Interrupted, because the way it was interrupted was we were inside a very holy spiritual place having liturgy, and then suddenly this woman comes in with a clipboard, and following her are dozens of people who have gotten off of a cruise boat. Oh, my gosh. And they come in in their khaki shorts and white kids and fanny packs and cameras, even though the sign says no photographs. And for about 30 minutes during the divine liturgy, which is like the mass for Catholics, which is the highest worship in the Orthodox Church, these pilgrims come in. So here we are watching. Here's the priest and the altar. They walk in. They walk past for like 30 minutes taking pictures, even though the sign says not to. Oh, my gosh. Touching the places where St. John, you know, held on, put his hand when he was hearing from God and writing the book of Revelations. So that went on for like 30 minutes. So I wrote um, an essay called Pilgrim Interrupted, which was about that. And then that inspired the whole volume, you know, 10 years later. Uh, And yet, you know, what was important about that about that experience was that I let it interrupt me pretty much out of pride. You know, it's like we're doing something spiritual here. What are you people doing in your kids and fanny packs? And yet once it was over, the priest who was serving the liturgy said, well, thank God they're here. <laughs> you know, they're getting to see something beautiful. You know, why does that bother you? And I had mm-hmm. to search my heart for why that interrupted me. And that inspired the whole book about how my whole spiritual pilgrimage has been interrupted by various things in life. Mm. Really, really, what are some of the other uh, various elements that were uh, interrupting um, the pilgrimage as well, too? It's just like, you know, besides um, tourists walking in and, uh, you know, in front of the mass. And uh, luckily, they didn't swipe the, uh, the wine in the breath, you know, like a snack or something. <laughs> Right, exactly. Well, you know, in in Orthodox spirituality, there's a lot taught about being quiet and going inside and the universe inside of us and all of that. And yet to experience that, unless you are a monk or a nun who has the opportunity to live somewhere where quiet is the norm for a mother of three children, a busy people, busy people in the world. It's really hard to pursue that. So things, quote, interrupt that. But it's a it's sort of a metaphor because they interrupt and yet they don't. They're the most beautiful things in your life. Your children, your grandchildren, your secular careers. Um, then then the, quote, bad things that happen. Your, the, I had cancer. I was in a life-threatening car wreck. All of these things can interrupt your pilgrimage. And yet... In the long run, they add to it and and they they inspire it and they inform it. And, you know, that's that's what I learned from it. And that's that's why I write the book. Mm -hmm. You also have 35 essays as well, too, three poems and uh, five experts from your books. And uh, maybe just, um, you know, give us uh, a few of your essays and maybe just um, a few notables from your books as well. Yeah, because the thing that's different about this book 
this is my eighth book, is that it's mixed genre, meaning it has essays, which are nonfiction, poetry, and excerpts from books, previous books. So a lot of it is previously published material, not new material. And yet all put together, it reads like a memoir. You know, so I divided all of that up into like six different sections of my life, which include the first section is icons and orthodoxy and spirituality. Because I'm a convert to the Eastern Orthodox faith from the Presbyterian faith of my childhood. And then the second section is writing, editing, and publishing. And that's about my journey as a writer. The third section is about Alzheimer's, caregiving, death, and dying. As you know from my previous books, I wrote a lot about that because of my mother's journey with Alzheimer's. And the I thought the blessing of being with five family members and close friends as they were dying and I wrote a lot about that. The fourth section is on family and adoption. My three kids, who are now 44, 40, and 39, are all adopted, and I have four grandchildren. And then the fifth section is on place, because as a Southern writer, place is a really important thing. Mm-hmm. Whether the place is the setting for your novel, whether the place has to do with with where you started from, on your pilgrimage, whether or not it's a spiritual pilgrimage. And then the sixth section is on mental health, addiction, and sexual abuse, which mm. I write about out of my own experience. So it's a, it's a mixed genre memoir collection. Mm-hmm. And also, too, we also talked last about uh, John and Mary and Margaret. And that was a great book as well, too, and a really Ill, good insight to us. It's like maybe you remind everybody what that book is about, maybe a few excerpts about uh, including your latest book. I mean, that was a great story, too, John and Mary and Margaret. Thank you. I, that was I was very much inspired to write that in the summer of 2020 when a lot of the racial uh, protests were going on uh, all over the world, not just in Memphis, but, you know, but even in Memphis. And because it's about a black boy from Memphis and a white girl from Jackson, Mississippi, who fall in love on the Ole Miss campus in the 60s. And the book covers 50 years of civil rights history. So it was timely to write that during that during that time when I wanted to have a voice. You know, I have a um, Korean daughter whose husband is black and they have mixed race granddaughters. And so these issues are really important and special to me. So I don't feel like I've left that. In fact, I quote, I have excerpts from that book in Pilgrim Interrupted. Hmm. That's really interesting as well, too. And um, I also still think about John and Mary Margaret. We uh, talked about last um, a while back. Do you think um, still much has changed? Do you think you're seeing some improvement or do you still still think it still needs some work? It needs a lot of work, Mike. It's like a a little bit of improvement. I mean, a lot if you compare it with 100 years ago, you know, but it still needs a lot of improvement. I, I can't fix it. You know, I don't know what it's going to take. It may take generations, you know, to fix and change uh, the racial disparity in our country and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, it certainly does. And, of course, uh, maybe some of the other things about, um, you know, a pilgrim uh, interrupt as well, too. And uh, what are some of the other things you would like to uh, highlight about the book? What I would like to highlight what? About about the book, yes. Um, Well, Primarily that I'm 71 years, 71 years old, and this is my eighth book. So it's a bit of a collection of things uh, throughout my life, because sometimes when we're younger, we think, I'm going to write a memoir. And I did. And I wrote one 20 or 30 years ago. But it was too young to write it because the story was still too young. I mean, it's still young. It's 71. It's not over. You know, and yet this is a compilation of a lot, a lot of different parts of my life. I have a blog, pen and palette, on my website, www.susancushman.com. And I started it in 2006 or seven. And so, um, and in fact, my first book, Tangles and Plaques, A Mother and Daughter Face Alzheimer's, is a compilation of 60 of those blog posts. So I think it's important, especially for anyone who wants to write, to keep a journal, to keep a blog, to keep a record 
of these things in your life because you never know at what point you might want to pull some of those into a larger narrative or into a novel, into a memoir. You know, I pulled it into my novel, Cherry Bomb. You know, now I pulled it into my novel, uh, Pilgrim Interrupted. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, what do you want the readers to uh, especially get, get from the book? A lot of different things. I was just on an interview with a woman who does a, a, a podcast for writers over 50, which mm -hmm. I kind of laughed at at 71. Because, <laughs> you know, 50 sounds kind of young, but she wanted my advice for writers over 50. And one of the things I said was, um, I have no regrets. I'm not a bit sorry that I waited till I was in my 60s to write my first book because, I mean, I, I admire younger authors who can do that. But I think a lot of us need um, several decades of life to acquire the wisdom and the experience to write significant things that are going to matter to people, whether they're on a spiritual pilgrimage, whether they are considering... Uh, their thoughts on civil rights and racial issues, whether they are struggling with healing from sexual abuse and struggling with addictions, eating disorders, uh, no matter where they are in their life, I feel like senior voices are important. Mm -hmm. and, and something to learn as well, too. And um, also, where can we get, get the book uh, Pilgrim Interrupted? Well, it's up for pre-sale right now on Amazon. It launches June the 7th, and it'll be available at bookstores everywhere. Okay. We will certainly check that out. And uh, what's coming up for Susan Cushman, we'll find out in just one minute. First off, you listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, International Warring author Mia Mosenzia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosenzia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Mosenzia has garnered great reviews in Evil Love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanne. Your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com or over 30 podcast platforms. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today and coming to Hamilton Radio as well. Also, don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com and check out the merchandise. Also, for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. For great books, merchandise, and more, Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at the Mike Widener Show.com and uh, just uh, make sure you do so today. We're here with uh, author Susan Cushman uh, back on the Mike Widener Show. It gives an update on Pilgrim Interrupted. And um, what can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Susan? Well, 2022 is when Pilgrim Interrupted releases in June. That will be my eighth book. And I just signed a contract for my ninth book, Ooh. which will be another anthology. So I have five books I've written, uh, which are, are um, novels, short story collections, and memoirs. And I have three anthologies I've edited. So this will be my fourth anthology. And the title is All Night, All Day, Life, Death, and Angels. Oh, it's my like, gosh. It's like the African spiritual all night, all day, mm -hmm. angels watching over me, my Lord. <laughs> so this will have um, essays, short stories, and poetry by 25 authors, and I'm the editor. And that will come out in June of 2023. So that'll be my ninth book. So, you know, in the seventh decade of my life, I'm really having the best time. I don't know what it'll be after that. Maybe I'll write another novel. 
or a short story collection. But I'm going to keep going as long as I can because I am having the time of my life. And certainly does as well, too. And uh, just another thing, what inspired you to write uh, an upcoming anthology, especially in four parts? It's like, wow, that's a project and a half. <laughs> well, I think that organizing and editing anthologies is actually easier than writing a book. Really? How so? Well, it just depends on your gifts. You know, I mean, to write a book takes not only a lot of creative effort, organizational ability, longevity, but to do an uh, an anthology takes knowing people. Yes, because I don't send out a call for submissions, say, who wants to write a book about this? I mean, who wants to submit an essay about this? Instead, I specifically invite authors who I think have something to say about the topic. Mm. And I feel like that's my gift is uh, knowing the people who are good at certain things, pulling them together, putting together the anthologies, editing them. So this will be my fourth anthology that I've done like that. Maybe I'll do another one. I, and they're just a lot of fun. And hopefully people will really enjoy them. And then they get to know a little bit about each of those authors. And then they can go, oh, I liked this one. And they can go and find that author's books and read them because oh. it's all about promoting story. Oh, wow. That is a really nice concept. I thought anthologies came from like, you know, short stories and uh, from an author and all that. But all this coming from other authors, that is so amazing. And were these all authors that you knew, um, you know, from the time you were writing and this happened over time or anything like that? So it's like I'm getting some uh, great ideas. I think I'll start an anthology myself. I like to bring some writers in. <laughs> Yes, actually, Mike, there are two kinds of anthologies. There is an anthology that's all one author's collections. And Pilgrim Interrupted is pretty much like that. It is kind of, see, it says at the bottom, a collection. Mm -hmm. Because it is a collection of only my work. But my, my anthologies that I've edited are collections of other authors' work. And so, yes, I have known personally almost all of these authors, or else I'm very familiar with their work. So when I put together an anthology on Southern writers, I know to go to Southern writers. If it's on uh, angels and spiritual journeys, I know to go to people that I have read who have that specific thing, like um, Sophie Burnham, who's writing the forum for that collection, has a fabulous a New York Times bestselling book on angels. Wow. So I went to her, even though I didn't know her personally, and I said, would you write a forward for this book? She said, send me the essay collection. I sent it to her. She loved it, and she wrote a, for, a forward. So that's kind of how that project works. I just think that's more fun even than writing. Mm, that's interesting. You mentioned about uh, Angels and Spirits in your anthology. What inspired you to, um, you know, start up uh, Angels and Spirits as an anthology? What was that first moment that somebody said, I'm going to start an anthology on Angels and Spirits? This is interesting. It was a great moment. So Cassandra King, husband of the late Pat Conroy, and I are good friends. And I was at her home in Beaufort, South Carolina, a couple of years ago. And I had read her her story about Pat, her husband, and especially about the end of his life. And there was an experience at which an angel appeared in their home. Uh, and it was fascinating. And she wrote about it in her book. And I said, Cassandra, I just love this. I would love, what do you think? What if I did an anthology about people who have had end of life experiences or near death experiences or experiences with angels. What do you think about that? She said, oh, definitely do it. And I would definitely contribute an essay. So that happened in the summer of 2021. And that wow. was my inspiration. Hmm. That's really interesting. I love to talk more about that when you put out uh, the Angels Anthology as well, too, on the Mike Wagner Show. This sounds great. So Thank this you. is going to be like a cliffhanger on this one. So just stay tuned. <laughs> We're here with uh, Susan Cashman of the uh, Cushman here on the Mike Wagner Show. Susan, a very big thank you for your time and thanks for updating us. Uh, we love to have you back. And um, once, again, once again, tell us about uh, where can we find your uh, book, Pilgrim Interrupted, your other books, and uh, how do people contact you? Well, you can find me easily at www.susancushman.com. All my books are available on Amazon and anywhere books are sold. That certainly may as well check it out. Once again, Susan, thanks for keeping us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back and definitely wish you all the best and looking forward to having you again soon.
Thanks, Mike. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. <laughs>